The rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated. <laughs> my app, I just had a tube go out. I looked in there and one thing lit. That's probably not what you stick your finger on top of. We are Ham Radio. Hey everybody, it's Freddie Mac, your Ham Radio Crusader, and I'm here to talk to you today about the Toad's Digital Interface. It's the proverbial brainchild of uh, T.O. from Temporary Offline Ham Radio and Hayden over at Ham Radio DX. <sighs> Tell you what, they got a good thing going here. But it's kind of a cool deal if you want to get down to the nuts and bolts of building all-star nodes, especially a high-powered all-star node, if you want to use like a mobile radio and get a lot of wattage involved, or at least more wattage than a, an HT can afford you, or a Shari Pi kit, which is, you know, it's a one watt. But if you want to reach a little bit further, this is a neat way to do that. I am moving, but uh, my node at the other house was strung to an outside a UHF 70 centimeter J pole. I had uh, the radio set on about 10 watts. I could set it at 40, but a little bit overkill because I can talk four miles away. I can talk all over town with an HT on my All Star node. Pretty convenient for me, but if that's something you want to do, you could do that. You could also use this for a repeater interface, and I'm going to get into that, but not in this video. I got a series of these videos yet to come, so let's take a quick look at the Toad's Digital Interface. Okay, so this is a close-up look of the Toad's DI board. Now, when you receive yours, these little uh, header pinouts, stand-up pins, will not be on there. It's just like in the videos. These will be empty solder point holes. And as you can see, I had a big, long header pin set that I was uh, soldering on to uh, Raspberry Pi Zero 2Ws. And I had plenty of extras. So... They clip off really, really easily. So I just did a two by six, two rows of six. I did a two by six. Fits in these holes perfectly. So I soldered them all on, as you can see here. Then I just got a bunch of these little D DuPont uh, wired pins. Uh, these, these in particular I got were female on one end, female on the other. And I also got some that were female on one side and male on the other. So they're kind of a quick disconnect for a prototype situation like we have here. And I use some of these Wagos to connect them to this. And there's a link in the description from where I purchased this little uh, jewel. It's a Motorola 16 pin accessory connector. And the pinout will be in the uh, description as well. So as I said before, all you need is five pins, one, two, three, four, five, for all-star to work in a half duplex or a full duplex mode if you're separating it for a repeater. But you see there's a jumper here. Pins 15 and 16 on the Motorola 16-pin accessory connector. If those are jumped, 15 and 16, the speaker on the front of the radio will still work. If these are clipped, they will not. But if you clip them and then wire these two to a speaker, then you will have an external speaker. So just an FYI there. So yeah, once I soldered these on, then I could take these and they just pop right on there. And I, I used the, the top six rows because that's a ground there as well. That was everything that I needed. I'm sorry, the top five rows starting at pin two all the way down here, pin three all the way down here. Nonetheless, all my pins ended up being on the top row, except for there. And yes, this is kind of a jumbled mess, but when you're prototyping, that's what you do. You just want to make sure you don't want to short anything out. So these components here are the receive and transmit audio where you can adjust them going through the capacitors and then the transistor that goes through the resistor. But you also have to do a diode, as you've seen in Hayden and TO's live stream. The diode for the PTT line is here. I just soldered it on to these two wires and then put some shrink tube over it and make sure it's in the cro proper orientation of polarity. And you'll be good to go. But man, oh man, I'm telling you, I can't believe how good the audio is on this and having USB-C into my Raspberry Pi is very, very convenient. And when the daughter board gets here, it will right on top of this. I actually got some of these, I have them here. So I've actually purchased some of these that will go on the daughter board because when the daughter board gets here, it won't have any headers on it either. They want you to be able to customize your own setup. I love that about this. I so love that. So when my daughter board gets here, this will go onto it and it will be able to plug right into my Toad's DI. And I'll show you some pictures of some other creative folks that's already 
had some great ideas as far as how to use this, how they're going to utilize it. But the fact that this is what it is and that it, the daughter boards are going to be expandable, like the first one coming is the uh, DI6. It's a six pin mini DIN connector that's coming. They're going to have a DI uh, RJ45 and a DI K board for a K type connector. <laughs> yeah, I know what it sounds like. It may get a name change. Who knows? But you know what? The fact that we have options for different radios is everything. I've already used this on a Motorola CDM750 and a Motorola GM300. So anything with a 16 or a 20, uh, except for one particular model, I'll put that on the screen, this, the pinout will work for as long as you get pin eight programmed to uh, PL CSQ detect in the Motorola software. So yeah, very cool stuff. And I'll be doing other radios, like I said before, as well as, as time goes on and as daughter boards are released. So we're gonna have some fun with this. Okay, everybody, here we are at my setup. If there's any background noise from the air conditioner, I apologize, it's summertime in Oklahoma. So here we have the Raspberry Pi. This is the Toad's DI board, Toad's digital interface. USB to the Pi. This is my breadboard setup. Let's see if I can clean this up for you. I'll try to make it a little less busy. So if you can tell. So right here's my transistor. Okay, so this is pin seven coming off of the Toad's DI to the resistor and off of the resistor into the base of the transistor. And then off of the uh, off of the collector, the transmitter goes to the PTT of the radio and then off of the emitter which is the black wire here goes to ground so base collector emitter collector goes to the radio for PTT active low the base comes through the resistor which is pin 7 from the Toad's DI board and then the emitter goes to ground and then you've got your two uh, audio pots here. Now this one's audio in from the radio. The audio in goes through the capacitor into the top side of the potentiometer. The sweep side goes to the top side of the potentiometer through the capacitor goes to the radio which is audio in from radio and then the ground. And this is the sweep center conductor that goes to pin 7 of the Toad's DI. All right, then we've got audio out. The capacitor goes to the center sweep. The center pin, which is the sweep pin of the potentiometer, the top side, goes to pin 5 of the Toad's DI. And then the bottom one goes to ground as always. Now, don't get me wrong. When I first turned this on, and I've got it running on the Motorola GM300, when I first turned it on, I could hear the carrier, but I couldn't hear any audio. These particular pots that I used, uh, you turn them counterclockwise to bring the audio up. And, I, and it's a 20 turn, so I had to turn it several times. And then I could slowly start hearing my audio coming up. And don't get me wrong, you've, there's a fine balance between the audio here and the audio settings in the Raspberry Pi. So I know this video is kind of clunky because I'm still getting my shack set up after the move. But you can see this is our Toad's DI interface board for the audio. This is our Toad's DI board itself. And over here is our Raspberry Pi. And here's our Motorola GM300. There's another interface board down here that is not connected to this radio at this time. So we're going to power the radio up. And we're going to power up the Raspberry Pi. And we're going to wait to hear some audio on our TID radio. IP address 192.168.10.137 And it boots right up. And after I fine-tuned it a little bit, the audio is just wonderful. Love it, love it, love it. Let me see if I can get us connected to the Parrot. Node 5555353. Five, 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 
Connected to node five seven six three three two. I like to give it a few seconds. This is WD1Q testing. Because sometimes somebody's in the middle of a test. Just about right. This is WD1Q testing. I heard Skywarn Plus going off on my note in the background. KD5FMU testing one, two, three. Audio level is low. KD5FMU testing one, two, three. The audio is low because I had my mouth a long way from the mic. <laughs> try that once more but I need to make sure nobody else wants to use the node. K85 FMU testing one two three. Audio level is just about right. K85 FMU testing one two three. It took the DTMF tones really really well. Node five 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 Five, three, disconnected. And I gotta tell you, it works really well. Please pardon the state of my uh, workbench here. It's still very, very fluid. This is my Motorola GM300. This is a functioning node, but I had to disconnect this other sound card and my uh, power supply to hook directly into this so I could power it from my Zeus Box Pro. That's the Podolaka Pro battery box from Ham Radio Crusader. Anyway, I wanted to show you guys the back side here. Now, if you can see, this is the Motorola 16-pin accessory connector. I buy these uh, pigtails from a gentleman on eBay who will be linked in the description. You can buy them from a lot of different sources. These wires come pre-crimped with the pins and you can insert them into this connector in the proper orientation. I'll also include that diagram. But as you know, all we need is five wires. Audio in, audio out, PTT, COS, and ground. And this jumper is in here so that the front speaker on the radio will work while in operation. So if it's not there, that front firing speaker on the GM300 will not make a sound. It's all depend upon you. And in the, you can see. As you can see right there, is the 16 pin accessory connector for the GM300. So when you get into other models also like the Motorola CDM750, it also has a 16 pin accessory connector. But no, it's not 16 pin, it is more pins than 16. So you're gonna use, this is a 20 pin, so you're gonna use all the pins inside the two outer pins and I'll illustrate that in a diagram. But wait, there's more. There are also these radios, the Motorola XPR series. This is the 4550. It has a 25 pin connector in the back. And I have to use a separate accessory connector for that and the pins are in different places so they are also programmable and I'll try to illustrate that for you as well. Even though the XPR series is analog and digital, DMR digital, they also make an uh, XPR 4300. This is a 16 or 32 cha channel version. It has the same accessory connector in the back, antenna, power plug. You can make an all-star node just as easy out of one of these. This is the 4300. It's a 4300 because there is no GPS antenna in the back. You can see that little plug there. They also make a 4350 that's also that many channels and does have the accessory connector. You can also use these uh, TYT TH9000Ds, and I'm, I'm going to be covering a bunch of different radios that will connect to the Toads DI, just so everyone will have a good grip on how easy this is going to be. So yeah, ain't that great? The Toads digital interface is easy to build out for all Starlink. There's going to be some other folks that are going to be building it out for other modes as well, but you know me, I love me some all Starlink. The daughter board that's coming is going to make it even more exciting in my opinion so we'll have a lot of videos for that once they come out won't be long now so with all that said get yourself a toads digital interface and have some fun do some ham radio stuff you're going to love this folks this is freddie mac your ham radio crusader saying 73s wishing all the good signals to be yours and ham on y'all